skies. In her beloved home state of Georgia, family and friends gathered for an extraordinary tribute to Rosalind Carter, remembering the former first lady as a passionate humanitarian and a devoted partner to her husband of 77 years, Jimmy Carter. The 99-year-old former president emerged from hospice care to say goodbye to his lifelong partner, seated in a wheelchair and covered with a blanket, alongside fellow presidents and every living first lady. Amen. Chip Carter called his mother the glue that held the family together. I will cherish how she and dad raised her children, that given us such a great example of how a couple should relate. An emotional Amy Carter spoke on her father's behalf, reading from a love letter he wrote to Mrs. Carter 75 years ago while serving in the Navy. Every time I have ever been away from you, I have been thrilled when I returned to discover just how wonderful you are. The musical selections, some of Mrs. Carter's favorites, including a tribute from the Carter's close friends, Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks. Imagine all the people. You provided for our country and the world. Secretary Clinton and Dr. Biden, we also welcome your lovely husbands. <laughs> Journalist Judy Woodruff, who covered the Carter administration for NBC News, highlighted Mrs. Carter's trailblazing years in the White House. What we witnessed was a first lady who saw her role as going well beyond the essential warm and welcoming host to being a close and trusted yes advisor. This morning, Rosalind Carter is back home in Plains, her place in history secure. This is the Eye for an Eye channel. Welcome to today's show. I have to cover this story about Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter's wife, Rosalind Carter, supposedly passed away a couple of days ago. Who knows if any of these people are even real at this point when you look at them. It's very hard to tell, but Jimmy Carter appeared at Rosalind's funeral. And there's a few things I want to cover here. So for those of you who have been subscribed to me for a while, I always kind of bring up Jimmy Carter when I talk about these ageless wonders. Jimmy Carter, David Rockefeller, George Bush Sr., uh, Henry Kissinger. These people all make it to 100. It's pretty incredible. And when you look at Jimmy Carter, the pictures, I know it's hard to look at. And of course, I have to be careful what I say. I don't want to be hate speech here. Uh, Jimmy Carter, of course, he, well, he kind of looks like the grandpa from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if you remember. <laughs> Jimmy, at this point, looks like somebody needs to get him a straw and a little bit of that adrena, you know, so he can continue on. But of course, that's how Jimmy has continued on for people out there that don't know. I mean, Jimmy has found the fountain of youth, even though it doesn't look like it because he's been in hospice care for quite a long period of time. And on top of that, Jimmy Carter, you may remember 10 years ago, was diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer. They were even reading Jimmy Carter's eulogy on NBC News saying, you know, Jimmy had a great life. Jimmy, you know, it's tragedy, but, uh, you know, Jimmy, we were, he was a great, he was a great man. They were saying this on TV 10 years ago. Look. Good evening. We begin with a remarkable moment that happened today. A former president speaking in a way we've never heard before about his serious medical condition and confronting his own mortality. Jimmy Carter went before cameras today to explain in great detail his recent cancer diagnosis, the removal of a tumor on his liver, and then the surprising discovery he fully revealed for the first time today. First, I, I felt that it was uh, confined to my liver and that they had, the operation had uh, completely removed it, so I had quite relieved. And then that same afternoon, we had an MRI of my head and neck and it showed up that it was already in four places in my brain. So I would say that night and the next day until I came back up to Emory, I just thought I had a few weeks left. But I was um, surprisingly at ease. The cancer, melanoma, a kind we usually associate with skin cancer and often a troubling prognosis. Yet what the world saw today was a sharp, upbeat and courageous man ready to face what's next. We begin our coverage with NBC's Hallie Jackson. Well, thank you all for coming this morning. In a frank, deeply personal, and very public conversation, President Carter revealed not just new details about his melanoma, but a man at peace with his diagnosis. I've had an exciting and adventurous and gratifying existence. So I was surprisingly at ease, much more so than my wife was. 
He kept the news from Rosalind, his wife of 70 years, for two weeks after doctors first told him in May a mass on his liver could be cancer. This month, they confirmed it, discovering it spread to his brain. News that's prompting messages from presidents and from folks in his hometown. He'll dramatically cut back on his humanitarian work at the Carter Center. We thought about this when I was 80. We thought about it again when I was 85. We thought about it again when I was 90. And uh, so this is a propitious time, I think, for us to finally carry out our long-delayed plans. President Carter's grandson, Jason, who will take over the foundation, learned of his grandfather's cancer when he called a family meeting. His almost immediate next comment was, and I really think I need to let the public know. I've been as honest and as open as I can be with the public for my whole life, and, and I want that to continue. And that's a, a real important part of who he is. A level of detail unprecedented in presidential history. I think what today showed is what we should remember about Jimmy Carter, that he was a good and decent man. And in politics these days, we don't so often get good and decent men running for politics. The former peanut farmer, grounded as ever in blue jeans, shared his news as he's lived his life with humor. Secretary of State called. First time they've called me in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> with discipline. I'll do what the doctors recommend uh, for me to extend my life as much as possible. And with faith. What message do you have to other cancer patients who are watching you go through this now? Hope for the best and accept what comes. You know, we've, I, I think I have been as blessed as any human being in the world. So I'm thankful and hopeful. After that extraordinary news conference, many in the chapel here stood and applauded President Carter as he walked out. So what's next for him? He still hopes to travel to Nepal to build houses, a trip that's been in the works, but said today it'll depend on his treatment schedule. So 10 years ago, they were reading him his rights, his last rights. And Jimmy is still here, 99, still kicking. I mean, if you want to say kicking, still uh, getting, at least still getting up out of his coffin in the morning. And the reason I'm covering this is because conveniently, Jimmy Carter, when, when he was diagnosed with this just a few years later, there was a sudden death in his family. Do you remember suddenly Jimmy Carter's grandson with really no problems whatsoever, just tragically died, almost like a sacrifice. We had a call uh, almost 12 o'clock that our grandson, who lives in Peachtree City and is 28 years old, a very special child who spent Thanksgiving with us instead of with his parents. He didn't feel well yesterday and uh, his mother was, he was at home with his mother. And uh, when he got ready to eat supper, uh, he thought, he told his mother he thought he'd go lie down a while. So he went to his room and lay on the bed and she went to see if he was okay. And his heart quit beating. They took him to the hospital and we got there, I guess about 1.30 this morning. And his, uh, after we were there for about 20 minutes, his heart stopped beating again. So they tried to give him CPR, but he passed away. And uh, he was just 28 and a very wonderful young man whom we love very much. So Jimmy, of course, diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer, then of course, somehow managed to lose a grandson tragically. And of course, those things do happen. But when you connect the dots and see how Jimmy has just hung in there for an additional 10 years, when they told us it was inoperable brain cancer, usually when you get cancer or anything in the brain, your time of your survival rate is very expedited. You don't have that much longer to live, you know, when all that happens. Now, another thing to note from the funeral of Rosalind Carter here is that all these first ladies all sat in the first row together, of course, side by side, because that for this day, they were able to let their fake politics aside because, of course, we all know that they're all in on this together, the left and the right, keeping our nation divided. All of these witches are all best buds. And, of course, they were able to sit with Melania Trump, who supposedly, you know, the whole Trump thing, these people were trying to throw him in jail and they hate her. And it's all a show. It's all a charade. And when they have to come out and do these, really what they are, giant rituals for these people, half the time these people don't even croak. It's just they like to watch from the shadows as people pay homage to them because they're the most narcissistic creatures that have ever existed. And Jimmy was, just, you know, they decided to roll him in. Now, if you don't know about Jimmy Carter... 
one of the worst presidents in the history of this country, along with obviously the guy who's in there now, and Barry Obama. They've been bringing a lot of mention to Jimmy recently, and that's, of course, because they attempted to do a lot of the stuff going on now when Jimmy was in power, was sabotaging the economy, rat, doing gas rationing. There was all sorts of stuff when Jimmy Carter was in power for people that don't remember. It's very, fam- very similar to the stuff going on now where gas was through the roof. They're doing rationing and all sorts of things, and it wasn't sitting well with the American people then. The mind control wasn't as thick then because all people had really was their television and the radio, and they weren't obsessed with their technology because this type of technology was not unleashed on the public yet where they're constantly under hypnosis from all the fake news that they're getting pumped into their head, giving them an alternate or an altered fake perception of what's actually going on. Really, we could just refer to it as what it is, which is the Matrix. So... On top of those things with Jimmy Carter, I mean, I can't get over, you know, the fact that he's out of Jimmy, you don't look too well, Jim. Now, people might say that's unsympathetic and things like that. These people who become president, they're not even human beings. Let's be realistic. These things, these people have entities inside of them. There's a reason that they've been bringing Jimmy Carter up a lot recently. And, of course, they probably have something ready for Jimmy, a big ritual. I'm sure Jimmy will go on a specific, most of them go on a specific set date that they pre plan but nobody questions when I when I come covering this because nobody questions how these people just make it to 100, right? Does anybody know anyone who's 100 and still kicking and doing this? Now, Jimmy Carter might say is in hospice care, the longest, obvious hospice care we've ever seen in human history is surviving hospice care. He's supposed to be on like, uh, you know, in hospice care, you get put on some pretty heavy stuff and you end up just kind of riding off into the sunset, but not Jimmy. But the fact that Jimmy's still alive, people don't ask questions. With his inoperable brain cancer 10 years ago, how's Jimmy still here? How's Henry Kissinger still, not just here, but giving lectures to politicians, etc.? Because these globalists, especially the, the guys who are really responsible for all of this stuff, who have put their foot on the gas because they want to see it before they venture off to the metaverse or wherever the heck they think that they're going, because these people aren't human anymore anyway. Most of them are already transhuman. But we have, look at the list of these people, right? George Bush Sr., David Rockefeller, Queen Elizabeth, Jimmy Carter, all these people just continually make it to 100 years old while the rest of us are just sick and suffering and they just seem to have cures for them but not cures for the rest of society, right? Well, I guess the cure lies in that adrenaline. I mean, adrenaline rush, right? You know what I'm referencing here. I mean, Google Chrome, I guess we should just call it from this point forward. I need to think of a word to get around the algorithm. Maybe we'll just say Google Chrome. Now, there's obviously other conspiracies revolving around Jimmy Carter. Now, I don't get deep into these types of things. Not that there isn't truth to them, not that it's not an interesting thing. It's just that I can't really prove anything, but other people out there do a pretty good job at showing those things. JFK supposedly is really Jimmy Carter in a lot of these conspiracy theories. Now, you can look at some of the pictures and say that is interesting. The ears are similar. The eyes are similar. I can see some of that stuff now. Obviously, I don't know for sure. I don't know at all. I don't really actually have much of an opinion on it because usually I like to focus on the psychological psychological aspect of it as well as the signs and symbols. So I don't really know how they would benefit other than the fact that obviously it really changed the direction of this country when they did do the so-called assassination of JFK. It, it's still looked at as one of the most traumatic events. Now, that also coincides, interestingly enough, 60 years. It's a 60th year anniversary of the assassination of JFK. So again, the supposed, I don't know, I'm not saying one way or the other, but that correlated with the passing of Rosalind Carter. JFK's assassination, November 22nd, 1963. So we were on the 60 year anniversary, then Rosalind passed. So there's some interesting things for anyone out there that's like, you know, conspiracy nut. I'm not really a conspiracy nut. I just kind of, you know, and I'm not saying it makes you a nut. I'm being sarcastic, of course. There's lots of things with these people we constantly can look at, shake our heads, and just say, wow, it's amazing that people get duped this bad with a lot of the things that are going on, especially how these, nobody has the question how these people just continue to go on and on and on. Of course, somebody needs to just maybe bring in, I don't know, I mean, there's obviously a lot of vampires at this funeral here. So maybe, maybe once, you know, the cameras turn off, I'm not saying maybe, of course we know, the cameras turn off. They'll probably be feasting on the flesh of some, you know, young guy, young boy, right? So anyway, Jimmy Carter rolled out. I always, for those of you that don't, I always got a kick out of the stuff with Jimmy Carter. Like I always slip in lines about, because in my day-to-day life, like when I am out, somebody brings up one of these people like Henry Kissinger. 
I'm like, I always just vent, or somebody has cancer, and I always will bring up Jimmy Carter's inoperable brain cancer. It's just, for some reason, it always just resonates with me. Like, I laugh about it because they came out read as a eulogy 10 years ago that Jimmy Carter has no cure, nothing could be done. And then we see, we still see Jimmy Carter. Does it, now, does he look alive? Well, of course not. Did he ever really look alive? Well, not really. Some people think he's wearing a mask. There's really JFK underneath there. So I don't know. But I always got a kick out of it seeing Jimmy Carter, and of course, nobody connects the dots with Jimmy Carter, the inoperable brain cancer, and then his grandson passing away tragically, right? Because they don't realize how ritual sacrifice works, ritual offerings work, and that's clearly what that was. And bought, looks like it bought Jimmy some extra time, because again, those are the things that occur. Maybe it was time Jimmy was up for his sacrificial offering, and he decided to give the blood of a young family member, bloodline, to keep himself alive for additional years. And of course, that's usually what they do here. So anyway, I wanted to cover that with Jimmy Carter. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, tragic, of course. And I love how all the politicians left and right, the female vice presidents, or excuse me, vice president, the first ladies all were there, first men, some of them, <laughs> were all there, whole, you know, hand and arm in arm. They're all friends for five minutes, right? Just like the people who defend Trump with hanging out with the Clintons, going to the islands with uh, Jeffrey. They're like, yeah, we didn't really know what he was getting into. And he was just, I mean, it's, they always make excuses for their, their idols here, right? And these people are nothing more than vampires. And that's pretty evident if you look at the grandpa from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at a side-by-side -side with Jimmy Carter. Thank you guys for being here. Hope you're all well. God bless you as always and your families.